Hello, my name is Mark Ellis from Stick and Rotor Studios, and today I want to uh, walk you through a tutorial uh, on XATC Chatter 1.7. Uh, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is show you how to download the product, install it, and walk through some of the key features and configurations that you could use, uh, you know, with this uh, plugin for X-Plane. Okay, so. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, how do you download XATC Chatter and how do you get it installed? It's relatively straightforward. Um, I think most of you probably know that uh, there is a free version of this product that you can download freely from the Stick and Rotor Studios website. It contains 400 US-based clips and uh, you can download that and uh, install it. And the installation procedure is going to be pretty much the same as the one I'm going to show you here. Um, you optionally can purchase the full clip set, which has over 29,000 ATC clips all over the world. Um, and with that one, it's a little bit larger of a zip file that gets pulled down. And uh, that you're going to want to download uh, from wherever the retail outlet is that you bought it from, like the explain.org store or directly from the Stick and Rotor Studios website. So I'm going to show you an example of how to do that. Um, if you bought it on the Stick and Rudder Studios website, it's pretty similar. If you bought it on the explain.org store, it's just that you would go to your order on the explain.org store and there will be a download button for, to download the content. Okay, so if you bought it on the Stick and Rudder Studios website, what you're going to end up with here is a receipt that will get emailed to you. And in that receipt will be a view product or view content link. Uh, just like you see in this receipt right here. So all we're going to do is uh, click on that. And it'll bring you to the download area on Gumroad, which is the, um, the payment processor that we use to uh, uh, process any of the payments for when you buy XATC Chatter. And they also host the, the files. So here, uh, XATC Chatter is distributed as one very large zip file. Uh, the demo is much smaller because it only has 400 clips in it, um, but it's the same concept. This one's big, 2.2 gigabytes, because it's got the over 29,000 MP3 puff files in it. So all we're going to do here is just do a download, and that will start downloading this file to our computer. And when that's done, we're going to go ahead and unzip it. And now that, that, that that's uh, downloaded, you see we've got it here in our downloads folder. All I'm going to do is unzip this. Now, I have to use a 7-zip, which is a uh, zip utility. Um, I'm, you can use whatever you like to use. But what I'm going to do is just right-click on this, and I'm going to go to 7-zip, and I'm going to say extract it to this temporary folder, XATC Chatter Full Clip Set. And this will take a few minutes to unzip. Okay, now that that's unzipped, let's take a look and see what's inside here. So the resultant uh, the, of the unzip should be this x-hc chatter folder. And if we double click and look and see what's in here, you're going to see a number of different folders. Uh, so let's just talk about what these are. Um, most of these here, like 32 and 64, Linux 64, Mac x64, this is where the binaries are for the X-Plane plugin, basically the code that's going to run when um, when XATC Chatter operates. Um, you've also got a couple of other things here, like, uh, you know, your manual, your user guide is here. There is an MP3 file for static that you can be playing in the background when you're using simple ATC, et cetera. Um, but the clips are all in this regions folder here. And if we just look at them, you've got all the different regions. And if we look inside one region, there's a controllers folder. And then there's one for approach, clearance, center, departure, you know, et cetera. So if we like go to clearance, here's all of the US clips, okay, for clearance. So what we're gonna want to do is back up here. This is the folder we want to copy and put into the plugins folder. Okay, make sure you don't grab this one. That's the wrong name. You need to be in here. It has to be called XATC Chatter, and it's the one, it's one up from this folder structure here like this. So we're just going to right click on that. We're going to copy it. And then we're going to come over and we're going to put it in our X-Plane 11 resources 
plugins folder. And we're just going to paste it. Okay, now that that's down, let's just double check it, make sure it's named properly. It has to be called x atc chatter dash chatter. Uh, you don't want to change the name of this like dash 1.7 or anything like that. It explains very fussy that this folder name must, must match the name of the plugin, um, you know, in let's say this one x64. So that base file name there must match that folder name. Otherwise, it, uh, it doesn't work right. Uh, so this looks like it's uh, installed properly, and now what we're going to do is fire up X-Plane and um, to explore how XATC Chatter works. Okay, now that we've got uh, X-Plane up and running, uh, first thing I'm going to do is check to make sure that XATC Chatter was recognized. And if we come up here to the Plugins folder, we should see it in the, you know, in the uh, Plugins menu here. So the first thing we'll do is let's just do something simple and open up the control panel. So this is the control panel within XATC Chatter. And you can see here that if it's installed properly, we should see all of the regions with all the clip counts next to these regions here. And then for any given region, once I select it, you'll see over here that all the controllers... I'm just going to go ahead and shut that off because uh, so I can talk and then we'll listen to it a little bit. Um, but as I check these uh, regions off, it'll show you the total clip counts for each of the different types of controllers, clearance, departure ground, center, etc. So if I, you know, come in here and I also pick Canada, you'll see all these numbers here increase because it's the total of what's in the Canada region and also the United States region. Okay. Uh, now, before we get into playing with this, let's take a look at some of the settings uh, we've got here. So the first thing is, um, let's walk through how the radios work. So the first setting here is refresh facility frequency database on start. Um, by default, this is on. <clears throat> and what XATC Chatter will do is every time it starts, it'll read all your scenery files and update its comm database with the frequencies at all the airports. Um, now, the beauty of this always being on is if you install any new scenery or any updates to the scenery, you can always be assured that your comm database is going to match perfectly. The disadvantage with this is, is that it takes XATC Chatter somewhere between 20 to 30 seconds to actually scan the database. So with this enabled, it will slow down your start of the, of the X-Plane uh, simulator. So after you've run it once, I usually shut it off and just, you just have to remember that if you install new scenery, um, you do want to put this back on again. And it does try to be smart. If it sees that you added a new scenery file, it will run this again. Um, but if you didn't change the name of the scenery folder, uh, it doesn't detect it. So it's not perfect, but it, it tries to do its best to keep things in sync. Okay. Another option you've got here is automatically select controllers based on the COM1, COM2 radio frequency. So you have a choice of either manually selecting, as you see what I'm doing over here, manually selecting which controller is playing at any given point in time, right? <clears throat> or what I can do is if I turn that on, what it will do is it'll be based off of what I tuned my comm radio to um, and whether the comm radio is on or not, okay? Uh, we'll skip this for a minute because it's only rarely used. Uh, only play chatter when the comm radios are powered up. So right now you can see I've got the plane is dark and uh, cold and dark. There's nothing turned on. If I turn this on, you'll see that my comm indicators up here turn red, indicating the radios are shut off. You're not going to hear any, any chatter if I click the play clip, okay? This one indicates that not only do the radios need to be turned on, but you need to have the audio panel monitor enabled on that particular uh, radio. And you've also got a feature here to pause chatter if any monitor radio is tuned to ATIS. Um, you know, this frankly is not re not super realistic because the reality is if you have, in a real plane, if you've got ATIS tuned on COM2 and you've got ground on COM1 and they're both enabled in your monitor, you're going to hear both at the same time. You know, and, uh, you know, as a pilot, you just kind of have to deal with that. But for convenience, 
you could check this, and if you tune to ATIS on any of your uh, monitored radios, it'll pause the chatter so you can hear the ATIS without you know hear, hearing the you know other controllers and and pilots talking at the same time. <clears throat> so for the moment, I'm just going to shut that off. Okay, under audio, you can pick the audio device that you want the audio to come out of. Some people like to have, maybe as an example, you might be having your air, aircraft sounds coming through a set of speakers, but you have headphones on. So you can actually choose uh, where the chatter is coming from. You can adjust your chatter volume, and you could adjust your aircraft engine volume, because sometimes the, the aircraft engines can be a little overwhelming, and you can't hear the chatter all that great. Um, so this kind of simulates uh, what I would call like noise-canceling headphones that you might have as a pilot in a GA aircraft. Uh, interior sounds. If you put the camera outside the plane, and it's really truly an external camera, with this enabled, okay, it'll pause the chatter. You know, so that if you're kind of out walking around the airport or whatever, you don't want to hear chatter because you wouldn't be able to. You would normally only hear that if you were in the cockpit. And here we've got the minimum and maximum delay times for the chatter. So the minimum delay is randomly um, when I pick, you know, you know how long I'm going to uh, the how long I'm going to wait in between clips. It's going to randomly pick a number between five and thirty. Sometimes it'll be twenty-five seconds. Sometimes it will be seven seconds between things. It'll never be never be below five. It'll never be above thirty. And obviously, I can I can set these to whatever I want. And I think what I'll do is this one. I'm just going to bump it up a little bit here. To 10. Okay. Uh, appearance. Many of these windows, you can choose how you want them to look. So as an example, now I have a solid control panel. If I want, I can make that translucent. Or I could even do things like pop it out and go ahead and put it on another monitor if I wanted to do that. Okay. And you could do the same thing with uh, this nearest facility window, which we'll look at in just a minute here if I bring that up. The nearest facility window shows you all of the frequencies uh, sorted by the distance from where your plane's currently at, right? So here I've got uh, the Lebanon Municipal ATIS is on 118.65, uh, Boston Approach 134.7. And I can actually tune my radios with this if I wanted to. You know, I could, you know, set it to, you know, whatever I felt I wanted to have it to ground, you know, example or tower. Um, also, if I tune the radios by hand, this is going to follow whatever the radio is uh, is tuned to. And I've got filters up here, right? Like if I only want to look at the tower frequencies, it'll show me all the nearby tower frequencies. Um, if I want to look at all of them again, I can click all. And again, for appearance, if I don't want this to be solid, I could make it, uh, where is it here? I can make it translucent. Or I can even pop it out and put it on another window if I want. Okay. And we'll go over simple ATC here in a minute. Now, integrations, uh, you can uh, have this work with X-Plane ATC. If you are using the X-Plane ATC, what's going to happen is, is X-Plane well, knows with its ATC, it knows what facility you're supposed to be talking to. And in this case, if I check this, these controllers over here are going to get selected based upon what X-Plane ATC thinks you're connected, you know, who you're talking to. Um, if you had something like 124th ATC installed in here, this enable external integration would show up and it would show 124th ATC detected. Um, this also works with things like XLife. If you have XLife installed in the XLife ATC, you can enable this to work with XLife uh, ATC. So at the moment, I'm going to leave these off. We're just going to, you know, kind of work with this manually. Okay, so that's pretty much the key settings that, that you've got here. Um, and let's take a look at how this works, okay? So if I shut that off, and I shut this off. Number six, four, five, nine, or Charlie, were you wanting 6,000 as a final? Sit back in and they approved it. Okay, so yeah, no problem. I just want to make sure you didn't want higher. We did have icing reports um, about 30 miles west of your position at 10,000 as well. So we'll just leave you there at six. All right, I'm just going to stop there and just talk a little bit about the clips. The clips are broken up into in a, a total exchange between a pilot and the controller. Uh, and that's what, that's what the delays are going to be between those two communication exchanges. So if I go in here and I say uh, 
pick destination ground, I should hear ground type chatter. 17350, monitor tower, 11835. Okay, and if I come over here and I pick tower, I should hear tower chatter. Tower United 576, ready for departure at 20. 576, there are airborne, contact departure 13365, clear for takeoff, runway 20, good day. Departure airborne, clear for takeoff 20, United 576, good day. Okay, now let's take another example. Let's assume I turn this on over here. And I say only play chatter when the radios are powered up. If I check this, it should give us a little yellow indicator here saying no radio power. It's paused because you don't have the power on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, light this plane up and get it working. So give me one minute here. Get the canopy closed. Tower Delta C247 holding short, ready at 20. Delta C247, Tower Airborne, contact departure 13365, 13206, clear for takeoff runway 20. Take off 20, departure airborne, Delta 2247. Okay, I'm going to shut that uh, off so I can talk. And again, you saw as soon as I turned on the avionics on the plane, this all came up and uh, in turn green, and now I can hear the chatter. It's going to play, you know, as long as I've got this play chatter turned on. Okay, now, let's take a look at how we manually tune the radios. I'm going to put this on to automatically select controllers based on the comp frequency. Okay, and I'm going to bring this up. Track here, 287 with you, uh, short 142. Delta 287, lane 5 to Charlie 40. Lane 5, Charlie 40, track here, 287. Okay, what I want to show you is, as soon as I turned on chatter, it automatically selected departure ground. And that's because I'm currently tuned to Lebanon Municipal's ground frequency 121.6, and that's what it says I've got selected up here. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, change this okay to the Lebanon Tower. So I've got that uh, 125.95 is tuned in here. And uh, you can see that also up here. And what I'm going to do is hit the transfer switch. Notice over here in the nearest facility, it now is indicating that I've got 125.95 selected. And if I turn on the chatter, Tower just 513 on final 30. Jazz 513, tower good day, wind 3206, open number 8984, clear to land, runway 30. 84, clear to land, 30, Jazz 513. Okay, so automatic controllers is going to give you the most realistic situation, right? Where as you're flying along, you know, you manually tune the radios to the frequencies you're supposed to be at, just like in the real life. And what should happen is, is the chatter you hear should match whatever it sees up here as your nearest facility that you're tuned to, okay? And that's the most realistic way to play it. Um, you know, if you don't want to be manually tuning the radios, you can come in here and just, you know, shut that off, that automatically select controllers based upon the comp frequency, and you can manually pick, you know, what you want to hear, okay? All right, so let's, uh, what I'm going to do is I want to show you a couple of other things here. So not only can you pick things based upon region, but if you come to this drop down here, you could also do it by countries. So as an example, when you get to Europe, um, you know, there's quite a few quite a few countries here. So let's just pick France as an example. And now I'm gonna turn this on. Zero two six three kilo departure one two seven seven five zero one. One two seven seven five zero two six three kilo. Bye bye. Right? And you can pick multiple countries, although, you know, usually that only makes sense for things like Canada, the United States, or, you know, places where the dialect is kind of similar and you can't tell the difference. Um, but, you know, 
all the various clips okay and, and keep in mind our collection although we've got 29,000 it still is a little sparse there are places in the world where liveatc.net does not have very good feeds so the volunteers that help put these collections together don't always go and grab a low quality feed where there's a lot of static or you can't hear things so it's not uncommon to find things like example Netherlands there are some really good live atc.net feeds in the Netherlands so one of the volunteers just went crazy and created a whole lot of them you know here with the Netherlands <laughs> We are in Yaisara 109. What's your line of array? Okay. You can also do it by ICO code. Okay. Uh, you know, as an example, I can come down here and uh, here is EHAA. Can't remember exactly what airport that is, but. And I better pick some. So the departure tower doesn't have any clips in it, so we'll switch over here to center. I got to shut that off over here. Okay. Um, you also have the ability with this to create a user-defined collection. Um, and basically there is a, this was described in the manual, but there is a folder where you can create folders underneath it and you could put your own clips in there. Uh, you know, particularly you might even do it by flight. You know, you might say, I'm gonna fly from New York uh, to Boston and you go out to liveatc.net and you collect a bunch of clips specifically for that flight. You could put them in a, in a uh, user-defined folder like that and uh, select that and you'll, all the clips you hear will make sense, okay, for flying between, say, New York and Boston, if you choose to do that. A lot of work to go get your own clips like that, but it is something you can do if you want. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna go back to regions, okay? So I think you got a pretty good sense of how uh, uh, XATC Chatter works from a pure, you know, Chatter perspective, okay? The various options, like whether you use automatic controllers, you don't use automatic controllers, whether you're going to do it by hand or, um, you know, however you want to, uh, you want to play it, okay? Uh, the next thing I want to go over with you is a new feature in XATC Chatter, which is called Simple ATC. And uh, let's shut the radio down here. Let's get rid of some of these windows. We don't need them all up. Okay, now the reason I did Simple ATC is I wasn't all that happy with the voices in uh, X Planes ATC. They're they're kind of robotic. They're they're not really very good. Um, and although I love Pilot to ATC, it's just an absolutely fantastic uh, virtual a uh, ATC program. Um, it is a little complicated, right? You have to do full-blown flight plans. Um, you have to teach it your voice. Uh, there's a fair amount, okay, to getting it to work, but it gives you an extraordinarily realistic experience. And all of the clips in XATC Chatter, uh, they work beautifully, you know, with, uh, with Pilot to ATC. Um, and there are other uh, good programs out there, like 124th ATC is pretty good. But these tend to be um, much more sophisticated, a little more involved with setting the flights up, uh, uh, and but they work, you know, very very well. Um, they don't necessarily work all that great for VFR flying, particularly to untowered airports. Okay, you know where, you know, you're arriving at untowered airport. You typically in the United States, you want to come in on the 45 downwind. You need to make your radio calls uh, at all the right times with the right phraseology. Um, they don't necessarily support all that all that well. Um, so I wanted something that would sound really good, was a little simpler to use, um, and would be somewhere in between, you know, what you get with the X-Plane ATC and what you get with a full-blown program like Pilot to ATC or 124th ATC, or for that matter, even flying on a network like uh, VATSIM or POSCON, positive control or something of that nature. So let's talk about Simple ATC. It comes uh, free with, with XATC Chatter. Um, it's optional as to whether you use it or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the 
simple ATC panel. And again, uh, you have a couple of choices here as to how you're going to make this work, okay? This simple ATC panel, it's kind of big. Where this works really good is if you want to pop this out and put it on a separate monitor. Um, and then, you know, you can do your flight plans, you can go to the communications channel, and you could see all of the communications you're doing with ATC. You can easily change all your voices, options, and stuff like that on a separate monitor. Um, you could also make it translucent, you know, if you wanted to, even though, even though with that, it does tend to still be a little on the big side and takes up too much room, you know, on a, uh, on a normal monitor. You can collapse it if you want, so it's a little bit smaller, right? Um, but in a minute when we get into this, there's another option where it's a simple, lightweight uh, transmission window that would come up after you get the flight plan, plan installed. So just so you could see it better, I'm going to put this back to a solid panel just so you could see what I'm going to do. Okay, so before we actually create a flight plan and start doing things, let's walk through uh, a couple of options. So first off, voices. A uh, simple ATC uses, on Windows, it uses the SAPI 5 uh, text-to-speech uh, capabilities built into Microsoft. And with Windows, you'll get, I think, one or two voices uh, by default that get installed. Um, there are ways to install other free Microsoft voices, and uh, the user guide actually has a pretty uh, detailed explanation as to how you would go about doing this. You can also buy voices. Okay, as an example, I have uh, down here, uh, maybe I didn't install them on this, I think they're over on my other system, but you can buy voices from Ivona and Sarah Proc. Um, they're very good voices. They can be a little on the pricey side, um, but they work really great. I also have been playing with this Amazon Poly uh, plugin. Amazon Poly is a Amazon uh, web service that is a very high quality text-to-speech uh, capability that's cloud-based. And Amazon makes a SAPI 5 plugin that you can install on Windows. Um, and once you've done that, you just get a whole bunch of voices here. So as an example, here's one uh, Amazon Poly US English. This is, this is a sample of Amazon Poly US English, Matthew, standard. And they even have some of these neural voices which are uh, you know, incredibly good sounding. This is a sample of Amazon Polly, British English, Amy, Neural. Right? And, you, you know, even though they speak English, um, they've got, say, for instance, uh, Vicky has got a German accent. This is a sample of Amazon Polly, German, Vicky, Neural. So, very impressive. Um, I do want to caution you with Amazon Polly. Uh, it is a subscription service. They have a free tier. Um, and I, I don't remember all the details on the free tier. I think it's maybe like a million characters a month for free. Um, but you do want to look into it, okay? Because if you once you sign up for this thing, um, they do end up charging you if you go over it, although it, it's relatively nominal, I think, compared to what you're going to pay for other voices. But it's definitely worth trying. Um, make sure you understand, you know, what you're going to get charged for if you use it. I personally love it, um, and I don't use it enough where I haven't gotten billed yet uh, once for it, but make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. So anyways, uh, on these voices, you pick which ones you want to use, and, and I'm going to clear these all because I've got way too many installed here. So I'm going to, I'll use Microsoft David. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to use? I think I'll... This, this is a sample of Amazon Polly, Australian English, Nicole, Standard. So I'll pick her, and let's see. This is a sample of Amazon Polly, U.S. English, Joanna, Standard. So I'll pick her, and I'm going to down here and try some of these other. This is a sample of Microsoft Linda, English, Canada. So you can see that one's not really great. Uh, the, some of the free Microsoft ones, they, they vary quite a bit in how, how good they this are. This is a sample of Microsoft Hazel Desktop. English, Great Britain. Eh, not bad. This is a sample of Amazon Polly, U.S. English, Matthew, Newscaster. All right, I'm going to use Matthew as my pilot.
This is a sample of Amazon Polly, British English, Brian, Standard. Okay. So basically you go through here on the voices, you pick uh, which voices you want to use for ATC. Um, and the way it works is every time you change a controller frequency, you're going to get a new voice. So it kind of just rotates around through the voices. Um, and then you pick, you know, the one you want for your pilot. Okay. And let's see what other options do we have here. You can, you can set what you want for the voice volume to be. Uh, you have the option of having a little static playing in the background if you wish. You can set the volume on that. Okay. Uh, and then you've got some other options in here. You've got use scenery frequency names. In this case, um, if your scenery files have got pretty good things like Boston Approach and Boston Departure, uh, it will try to use uh, what the scenery comm names are that are built in the scenery. They're not always properly configured, okay? But it's worth trying turning that on because you'll get a more realistic thing. If it's starting to sound like the scenery files weren't done very well, uh, you can always shut this off and it'll just be more uh, generic like contact approach or contact departure, okay? Um, you've also got a thing here called show pilot transmission window and we're going to look at that in a minute. Rather than having this big simple ATC window up, once I've got my flight plan filed, I can close this and then when there's a transmission ready to, for me to transmit, this little transmission window can come up, okay? And I have a bunch of options in here that you can play with, um, you know, when you, get a, when you get a chance, okay, to try it out and see, you know, how you want it to work, okay? Because it can automatically expand and collapse and expand when you uh, push the push the talk button, uh, that type of thing. Um, you, we can even get the co-pilot to handle your radios for you. Um, and you could have triggers, like uh, if I have co-pilot handling radios, your trigger for getting clearance would be when you turn the beacon light on. You could also set this uh, trigger so that it would be when you push the push to talk switch, it'll trigger that transmission. And I'm going to just shut this off for a minute because you can play with that. Now, the push to talk switch is a pretty common thing you're going to want to use. Um, I find that although in this communication channel here you'll see in a minute there's actually a transmit button here you can push, it's not very natural. It's much more natural to have uh, one of the buttons on your yoke uh, configured to that. So let's take a look at how we do that. And it's pretty much the same way you do it in everything in X-Plane. Come over here to joystick um, and here I've got my my um, Thrustmaster HOTAS. And this is the one I'm using here, button number two. And you can see that I have it set to transmit a simple ATC pilot transmission. And the way you find these things is, uh, you know, just come in here. Easiest thing to do, just say uh, simple, type in simple like that and apply. And I should have this properly configured. If I, if I click on the button here, it does show that it's working. Okay. So now I've got my push to talk switch. switch. Let's go ahead and put a flight plan in. Let's close down some of these windows. I'm going to leave the play chatter off for the moment, so all you're really going to hear is just the um, ATC communications. And on the flight plan, uh, it's going to initially pick up the airport names from the scenery files, but you can edit them. Like, for instance, at Lebanon Municipal, they don't call it, the, you know, the, when they call a tower, they don't say Lebanon Muni Tower. They say Lebanon Tower. So I can edit this so that the communications will sound right. Okay, um, you would listen to ATIS, you'd figure out what your ATIS number is, you'd pick that um, when you're going to do it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to ask for an engine start uh, permission and I'm going to want to do a lineup and wait. And in my case, we're going to go to Manchester, New Hampshire. That looks good. 
Now, Lebanon Municipal is a class delta airport. It does not have radar services. So um, simple ATC does try to detect this, uh, but if it, if it gets it wrong, you can click it. And in this case, it's ex it would be expecting that if I have radar services, I would get handed off to departure, um, you know, as I'm, as I'm leaving this airport. Manchester is a class Charlie airport in New Hampshire. It does have radar services, so this gets checked. And that's going to control, you know, as you're flying along, uh, am I going to get handed off? Uh, if, let's say, as an example, if I was arriving in Lebanon, uh, center would hand me off directly okay to the tower, right, because there are no radar services here. In this case, as I'm flying along, center would hand me off to Manchester Approach. And then Manchester Approach would hand me off to Tower. Okay? Uh, you can put in here, you know, where I want to taxi to. So by default, because the date, I'm going to say I want to go to General Aviation, if I spell it right. Parking. And I can say what kind of a flight I am. So if I'm commercial, it's going to want me to put in my airline name and the flight number, like United 6626. If I'm not commercial, I put in what kind of a plane I am. So here I'm a Viper jet. <coughs> Type of flight, I'm going to be IFR, VFR, or VFR with flight following. So we'll do an IFR. Um, you'd put in the plan altitude. So in my case here, I think I'm going to fly this at 12,000 feet. This is the initial altitude I'll get cleared to. Okay. And you've got your transition altitudes here. Uh, 18,000 feet uh, is what it is typically in the United States. And what this means is once you get to this, uh, to this 18,000 feet, you would switch your... Um, altimeter over to standard, like 29.92. And then everything from that point gets referred to in altitudes as flight levels, okay? Now, you can change this because in different countries, this value is different here, okay? And we're going to file that flight plan. Now, over in the communications window here, if I want to, I can use these little hints, okay, to do things like turn on the transponder, get the... Uh, um, transponder setting to squawk, and it knows that I'm supposed to contact clearance, you know, so I can contact clearance. This is this little pilot transmission window that would come up, okay? And again, that's completely optional. Like, I can turn that on or off, right? In my case, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off for the moment, and I'm going to show you how this works, okay, if we do it just with this. So this would be the kind of window where you pop this out, you put in another window. Um, I could go ahead and hit the transmit button here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my push to talk button. Lebanon ground, Viper Jet 685 Delta Whiskey, at Echo Ramp with information Foxtrot, ready to copy IFR to Manchester, Kilo Mike Hotel Tango. Now the controller should come back and give me 685 Delta Whiskey is cleared to Manchester, Kilo Mike Hotel Tango, fly runway heading, climb to 4000, departure on 134.7, squawk 4462. And then I have to transmit that back. 685 Delta Whiskey is cleared to Manchester, Kilo Mike Hotel Tango, fly runway heading, climb to 4000, departure on 134.7, Squawk 4462. 685 Delta Whiskey, read back correct. Contact me this frequency when ready for engine start. Have a great day. Okay. So um, now I can go ahead and click on this up here and, and it'll automatically set the squawk for me, or I can do it manually. And I'm going to do it over here on my hardware panel I've got. And as soon as I set the transponder to 4462, the hint went away, okay? Now, in a bigger airport, um, you know, at the moment in Lebanon Municipal, it's a class delta. Your clearance is actually your ground, 
frequency. So I don't have to switch over to ground. I'm already basically on ground. But if this were a class Charlie, I'd probably have to switch frequencies right now. Um, and I would get a hint telling me to do that. And you're going to see this in a little bit when we when we do this to tower. OK, so this is how you would operate it with a simple ATC panel. Um, typically with this one, you'd put it up and put it over another monitor. I'm now going to show you what it looks like if I do it with the options to do the show pilot transmission window. And I am going to tell it that um, I want it to auto collapse, which means that it'll show it. And if I don't transmit within five seconds, it'll automatically collapse the, the pilot transmission window, and then I can open it back up again. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, I have to push the push to talk once to get it to uncollapse. And I think this will work, okay? And now what I'm going to do, I'll move this so it's kind of up here. And I'm going to close this. Now you can see I can uncollapse it with this. But it will also do it automatically if I just push the push the talk button. And then I'm going to push it again. And it will transmit. Lebanon Ground, Viper Jet 685 Delta Whiskey. At Echo Ramp, request engine start. 685 Delta Whiskey, engine start approved. Now I have to acknowledge that. Engine start approved, 685 Delta Whiskey. It shows it, and then within five seconds it should collapse because that's what I've got it set to. Now I can open up again here and I could pick my runway if I wanted to. You can also pre select the runways, but seven's good. Okay? So I'm kind of ready to taxi here, even though I don't have the plane powered up, but we'll make believe. Lebanon Brown, Viper Jet 685 Delta Whiskey, at Echo Ramp with information Foxtrot, ready to taxi. 685 Delta Whiskey Taxi to Runway 07. Taxi to Runway 07, 685 Delta Whiskey. Okay, now at this point, I would go, I'm not going to bother doing this, but at this point we would taxi on out, we'd get to the whole point of the runway, and then what you have to do is you've got to dial up tower. Okay, now I can do this manually. But I think what I'll do is I'll just show you here how you could do this here. I'll bring up this nearest facility panel. I am going to go ahead and click tower. As soon as I click tower, you notice this came up because, you know, once I'm on tower, I'm ready to announce, okay, that I'm ready to rock and roll and take off, okay? So I have a couple of choices here. I can say I want to do a lineup and wait, and I'm going to just reduce this a little bit to something like, uh, well, actually, this is not going to work because if I do lineup and wait, it, it's, it's expecting me to get my heading, um, you know, to be lined up with the runway. And since we're not at the real runway, that's not going to work, okay? But I could pick that. And once I taxied out and I got my um, aircraft headed in line with the runway, the timer would start, and then it would actually tell me to go ahead and take off. I could also ask for back taxi, particularly if I was entering the runway midpoint in the field and I wanted to back taxi full length okay to get a full runway so I can pick this all up so what I'm going to do is shut these off okay Lebanon Tower Viper Jet 685 Delta Whiskey ready at runway 07 685 Delta Whiskey wind is light and variable runway 07 cleared for takeoff Runway 07, cleared for takeoff, 685 Delta Whiskey. So I think you get a sense of how this works. Um, if you actually go watch the demo video, there's a full flight uh, that we did in the demo that will actually show you how it sounds and what it looks like, you know, going through the full-blown, you know, starting up, getting clearance, requesting taxi, um, you know, moving on out. And, and getting handed off from departure to center and center to approach and, and all that stuff. Um, it works really good. Uh, I think what you'll find with it is once you get it set up, it's pretty simple. It's not a complex flight plan, um, and it works fairly well. It does not do things like SIDS and STARS and uh, vectoring or any of the other complicated stuff. It's relatively simplistic. 
um, bought with the Amazon Poly Voices or with some um, purchased Seraproc or Ivona Voices, uh, I think it sounds really great. And then combine that with the chatter and you get a really, uh, a very nice uh, immersive experience. So uh, what I'd suggest you do is uh, play with this a little bit. Uh, there are a lot of options in how to set up. I think the user guide uh, covers them fairly well. And you can set this up and um, get it to work the way you want it to, to work. So again, thank you very much for watching this. And I hope you enjoy XATC Chatter.